The only senators who are actually talking to each other are the so-called gang of six, three Democrats and three Republicans who are meeting in secret to discuss the long-term financing of the federal government. Joining me now is Idaho Republican Senator Mike Crapo, one of the gang of six. Senator Crapo, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Lawrence. It's good to be with you. Senator, how will you vote on H.R. 1 tomorrow on the Republican budget bill that passed the House of Representatives? No, I will vote yes for it. I believe that it is a good first step, but you got to put it into perspective. It's a $61 billion cut when we are talking about the need to trim $4 trillion off of our deficit over the next 10 years. So although I believe that it's a good step, uh, I definitely don't think that it focuses on the scope of the issue that we really have to deal with in this country. Now, Senator Reid is eager to have Republicans vote on the House bill because Democrats believe and Senator Reid believes that moderate Republicans, uh, say the senators from Maine, uh, for example, are going to have a problem with this kind of bill because it cuts so drastically and it cuts, as Joe Manchin says, in a uh, haphazard kind of way. Are you going to be able to hold on to all of the Republicans in the Senate tomorrow to vote for the Republican, the House Republican budget bill? Well, I don't know the exact count. We'll have to see how that vote turns out. But I would expect that the vast majority of Republicans will support it. Uh, I understand the attack that is being made that uh, Joe Manchin just mentioned and that uh, the president and others are, are making. you got to realize, though, that this is a 1.6 percent reduction of a $3.7 trillion budget. And, uh, you know, if, if we can't cut 1.6 percent of a $3.7 trillion budget, then we are in big trouble as we try to tackle the huge mounting debt that we have, a debt that's 14 plus trillion dollars now and going to be 21 or 22 trillion dollars over the next decade if we don't take some very strong action. Senator Crapo, you are in those uh, secret discussions of the so-called gang of six to take on the debt and the long-term debt issue. Uh, is everything on the table in those discussions and by everything, of course, I mean tax increases? Uh, I would say everything is on the table, but I, I think that there's going to be a tremendous debate over many parts of the issue. For example, uh, if you take up the issue of tax policy, uh, one question is the age-old debate of tax increases or tax reductions. But what we determined in the fiscal commission, the, the president's fiscal commission that was a part of that plan, was that the main focus on tax policy should be tax reform, which would generate a, frankly, a reduction in tax rates. And and a, an expansion of the base that then leads to a dramatically increased and stronger economy with more revenue to the federal treasury. So uh, really, I believe the debate on, on the tax side of the equation is much more properly focused, as the President's Commission focused it, on the reform of our tax code. Senator Crapo, I just want to back up over that statement about taxes, because I, I think I heard something that is different from the Republican chant about cut taxes and you'll raise more revenue by cutting taxes. It sounds to me like what you're talking about is lowering tax rates if and only if you clear out some of the deductions, some of the clutter, in fact, the thousands of pages of clutter and deductions and loopholes that are in the tax code so that I could, for example, end up with a lower tax rate and end up paying a larger amount of money in taxes or the, or the same amount of money in taxes with a lower rate. Well, you, you would have to look at the way that kind of reform worked out in individual circumstances. I think in the vast majority of cases, for the vast majority of Americans, it would be a, a, a big simplification of the code and a reduction of their tax burden. I mean, if you look at our tax code today, there are $1.1 trillion of tax expenditures, which for the most part are very, very difficult to justify, except for some of those that focus on things like the mortgage interest deduction and charity deductions. We have a tax code that is, it would be hard to find a way to make one that is more complex, less fair, uh, more expensive to comply with, or more anti-competitive to American business. And what I'm talking about is going into those tax expenditures and weeding them out, as you indicate, and reducing the tax rates dramatically, taking the top rate from 39% down to 23% or 25% or 28%, depending on how you do it, doing the same thing, making 
including the lower rate end up being lower than 8%. And like I say, I, I don't believe that that would result in a higher tax burden for the vast majority of Americans. Senator, are you hoping that Republican candidates for, for president will be willing to leave everything on the table in the, in the menus that we have for curing the fiscal situation going forward? Uh, absolutely. I believe that every candidate and everybody who's involved in elected office has to recognize that the issue we face, our national debt crisis, is so serious and so threatening to our nation. Our, our, the, the, chief, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs have said, has said that the highest risk to our national security is our national debt. Everybody must recognize that, particularly elected officials, and we must recognize that the steps necessary to solve this problem are going to involve taking trillions of dollars off of our national debt, not just fighting over $60 billion like we're doing right now. Senator, what would you say to Republican presidential candidates who are presented with Grover Norquist's pledge that he does every time about you must pledge to never consider raising any tax in any way? Uh, that would include gasoline taxes which could be part of a long-term fix. That would include, in, in Norquist's definition, even changing some deductibility items. For example, limiting deductibility of mortgages for millionaires. That would be considered a tax increase under uh, Grover Norquist's pledge that he forces candidates to sign. Would you urge candidates not to sign that pledge? No, I actually support the notion that we're talking, that he's talking about there, but I think it should be explained. Uh, he's not saying that we can't make those kinds of adjustments. He's saying that there should be rate reductions for those kinds of adjustments. Uh, that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. The notion is that we should broaden the base and then exp and reduce the rates, which would then give us a dramatically increased and more competitive tax code, a much stronger economy, and frankly, much greater revenue to the Treasury to help deal with our fiscal problems. Senator Mike Crapo, Republican of Idaho, thank you very much for joining us tonight, Senator. Thank you.